Well, 2022 is going to be awesome. Okay, for the five of you that believe it, lay your hands on somebody else. 2022 is going to be awesome. In Jesus' name. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm just curious to know how many New Year's resolutionists, I don't even know if that's a word, how, how many of y'all make New Year's resolutions? Can I just see a show of hands? Everybody wave at me from the other campuses as well. How many of you all definitely do not make New Year's resolutions? Give me a wave. Yeah, the do nots have won both services so far. Now, I'm just curious to know how many of you all that make New Year's resolutions have somebody that you wish made some New Year's resolutions in your life? Don't look at them right now. Don't look at them. Don't want to cause any marital strife in church. I was reading this week about a guy that said he was making his first New Year's resolution to read more. He said, here's how I'm going to do it. I turned the subtitles on on my TV. <laughs> 2021 was awesome. God did great things in the spiritual family called High Ridge. Before we jump into what we're going to focus on this year and jump into the blessings that God has coming for us, I want you to take a look and see what God did in 2021. Now, would you all hold your praise at all campuses? Would you hold your praise and your applause and your thanks till the very end? Because this is awesome. God did a lot of things through us in 2021. Watch this. I want to take a second and, and thank everyone that participated in 2021. There's a lot to celebrate in what God did in High Ridge Church in 2021. We saw people healed physically, saw people healed spiritually. We're linking together our faith to launch two new campuses in 2022. That happened because we agreed to do it in 2021. It has been a great year, and I want to tell you I love serving the Lord with you, and I'm proud of you. God bless you. It is exciting to see how God is using High Ridge Fort Worth, High Ridge Longview, High Ridge Graham, and High Ridge Mineral Wells to strengthen people for life. Last year, as we moved out of a pandemic, our family of churches remained stronger together by adding additional services and strengthening 724 new families who joined us in worship. We continued to see exciting life change as 1,800 people prayed to receive Christ. 321 people took a step of obedience through water baptism. 521 people found freedom in groups by stepping into community for the very first time. 341 joined our High Ridge family through membership class. And 403 people discovered purpose and are making a difference through serving, including 108 people who led a group for the very first time. Many men and women grew in community and deepened their faith through our annual Flourish Conference, Men's Night, She Speaks, and Men's Breakfasts. We celebrated the release of Pastor Jeff's first published study, Life in the Holy Spirit, where we saw 1,118 join a super series group and grow in a life-giving relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because of your faithful generosity, our family of churches made a huge difference in our local communities this year. 774 people served through local outreach where kids received a free pair of shoes. Diapers and wipes were donated to local pregnancy centers. Families were provided a holiday meal through our Thanksgiving baskets. Our city's homeless were fed and encouraged. Children's lives were forever changed by High Ridge families who committed to foster and adopt. Local teachers and bus drivers received gifts of appreciation for impacting the next generation. In partnership with Fort Worth Fellowship of Christian Athletes, coaches and athletes were equipped with the gospel as they learned to use their platform of sports to share their faith in our schools. Business leaders were strengthened and encouraged. We cleaned up our cities through partnerships with many community initiatives, including Trinity Habitat for Humanity. And in partnership with Hope Local, we were able to advocate for vulnerable children to help them find their forever family our national and global efforts are growing as we continue to make a lasting impact in churches, children, and families around the world. Nationally, through partnering with Samaritan's Purse, we helped bring spiritual and physical support to families hit by natural disasters. And through our partnership with Wall Builders, help to share America's forgotten history, its heritage, and its Christian, moral, constitutional foundation. Through the faithful efforts of Beloved Ethiopia, 
Our global impact continues to help double orphans find a loving, godly place to call home. Through our partnership with Build Strong, we helped build tabernacles in South Africa, and financial support was given to aid in freeing children from sex trafficking in the Philippines. Thousands received fresh water and food around the world through our partnership with Life Outreach International. The people of California are stepping into the vision, and we are excited to share that High Ridge Rockland is launching January 30th. 83 people have joined their launch team. 18 people have stepped into leadership. 30 groups are ready to receive people into community and seven people are already signed up for water baptism. Life change is already being seen in Rockland, California. And at High Ridge Parker County, we have completed demolition and are excited to begin construction on phase one. Your faithful generosity is truly making a difference locally, nationally, and globally. We believe many lives will be strengthened in each of our communities as we continue to help people know God Find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. 2022 at High Ridge Church is going to be phenomenal. There are so many good things already taking place. I am really excited. I just believe worship is going to be off the charts. Faith is going to grow. People are going to meet Jesus. People are going to be touched and healed. Connections are going to be made. Community is going to be built stronger. In 2022, we're going to lock and load with the Lord and set an anchor in the goodness of God in a greater way than we ever have before. It's going to be a great year, and I'm excited to do it with you. Isn't that awesome? Can you all continue in giving thanks? High Ridge Church Rockland have many of the members of the, of the new congregation worshiping with us. Can we just tell them we're proud of you, excited about what's going to happen in the next three weeks? God bless you all. Can't wait to be with you three weeks from now. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Well, the vision statement of High Ridge Church comes off of our mission statement. Our mission statement is to strengthen people for life. Why do we believe that that's important? Because I believe our world is discouraging enough. What about you? I believe we need some people speaking encouragement and building people up because there's enough people tearing, tearing our friends down and tearing us down around the world right now. I believe people need help. They don't need to be condemned. I believe people need to be brought into the goodness of God, not pushed away because they don't measure up. And so that's why we want to strengthen people for life. Now, our vision statement puts feet to faith. You just saw it. We exist to strengthen people for life, to help them know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. What's it mean to know God? We wanna help people meet Jesus. We wanna help them know that he's the only one who can forgive sins, that living a good life still falls short. That's why you need a savior, because Jesus loves you and wants to forgive your sins. He'll do it for anyone that asks him. And that's why if you'll bring your friends to church services, we will help the pastors at each campus, we will help your friends meet the Lord. But not just know Jesus for salvation. We want to help you know the Lord and grow in spiritual strength. We want to help you know his word. We want to help you to know and discern the still small voice of the spirit. We want to help you to live a life of faith. Know God, find freedom. I don't know about you, but I was, I was very thankful the day that I understood I could get my yesterdays dealt with so they wouldn't condemn another today. We need for our yesterdays to be dealt with. That's what we call finding freedom. Those groups are coming. If you haven't been in a freedom group, it did a work in my life that I didn't know I needed to have done, and I know it'll do a work in your life. We wanna help people find freedom, and that is a continual process. Our lives are like an onion. The Lord just keeps peeling off layers. Why? Because he wants to get to the center of what needs to be dealt with in our life. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose. Too many people, too many people, some here today, some on other campuses, some watching in different places around the, the state, United States, and around the world. Living life without purpose. Not knowing what on earth you're here for. Not understanding that God loves you and has a plan for your life, and he's got something he wants to work through you that is unique to just you. Everyone should live your life with purpose, and that's why we try to help you discover your purpose. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. Make a difference comes when you get a hold of someone else and connect them and bring them along into the blessings. All too often, Christians in America especially, go through the process of knowing God, become worshipers, and then become consumers. 
and then judge church services and judge pastors and judge worship leaders and judge the, the mission of the church and become a critic rather than a participant. And uh, the way that you grow spiritually is by leading other people to grow spiritually. It's not by just continuing to just get more and more and more for me. That's how you make a difference. That's how you make a difference. That's why we value mentoring so deeply here at High Ridge Church. Well, each year we have that as our theme, but we also have some bite-sized pieces, some smaller themes that we can grab hold of. In 2019, it was Love Better. And man, did love ever increase in 2019. In 2020, it was Faithing Forward. Faithing Forward was an interesting year. And I thank God he gave us the theme of faith because it was a shutdown year, churches shutting down, pastors quitting, a very, very anti-faith year. But God told us to faith forward. And it was during 2020 that the Lord told us to launch High Ridge Church Rockland, California. And the Lord told us to buy a, a movie theater complex in Hudson Oaks, Texas and start a campus that's coming hopefully this year called High Ridge Church, Parker County. And we did that because the Lord told us to faith forward. Not to let the circumstances of the world shut us down, but to continue on with wisdom to continue on faithing forward. And then last year, our theme in 2021 was Stronger Together. I just believe the Lord told me that the pandemic was gonna continue and we needed to get closer to each other and, and small groups needed to be stronger and we needed, to, we needed to connect in order to make it through this together because when everyone's walking with someone, then that means no one's walking alone. And that's why I have such a high value on small groups. And that's why in 2021, we broke a record Matter of fact, I've never heard of this ever happening before. This is how proud I am of the High Ridge family of churches. In 2021, we had 99% of the adult population attending worship services in small groups. And friend, I'm here to tell you, that is awesome. And it's centered around a project that I put together called Life in the Holy Spirit. Thank you all for enjoying that. Hopefully this year there will be a book coming called Life in the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all might buy it when it comes out? I love 30 of you. The rest of you? And uh, it's, it's just so awesome what God does in small groups, which, by the way, I just want to tell everybody, we would love for you to lead a small group. Today you can register to lead a small group at all campuses, in the lobby or online. We would love for you to lead a small group. Why? because I firmly believe, I've said this a hundred times and I'll probably end up saying a thousand before I go to be with the Lord in glory. I believe you grow more spiritually when you're sitting in a circle than when you're sitting in rows. Now thank the Lord you're here today. Thank the Lord you're, you're worshiping at the other campuses and we will teach you the word and we will help you grow spiritually. But something happens when you're sitting in a circle you're sharing your life with someone else. They're sharing your, their life with you. You're praying for them. They're praying for you. And you lock your shields together and you advance together as the army of God in relationships. And we highly value that and we always will. I wanna encourage you to lead a small group and to get in a small group. Well, let me tell you about how the theme for 2022 came together. So after Easter in 2021, but in, in, you know, Easter is the Super Bowl of Christianity. So I was trying to, I was thinking, Lord, when would be the best time for pastors to get together and go on a retreat? The week after Easter, because we're, we're on a high. The number of people that were in church met the Lord, number of healings, and so we went on a retreat. And um, we got away, we had some fun. We, uh, we rode um, Segways, we were in Austin. I just felt like we were to pray through the Capitol. Has anybody ever ridden a Segway through Austin? It's pretty phenomenal. You, you ought to do it. Riding segways is fun to begin with, but going through and seeing everything that there is in the capital and praying for our great, our great state and, the, and the, the very center of our state was awesome. But we were riding segways and we had a blast. One of the pastors who shall remain nameless uh, crashed his segway. His initials are Pastor TR. Anyway, so we had a blast. We also played a game that I love called Battle Ball. Now, Battle Ball came as the result of me having three sons, five kids total, two girls, three boys. Boys always had friends over, and uh, there was always some, some playing and some roughhousing going on. I personally think that's healthy for boys to do. And so I created a game in the swimming pool called Battle Ball. So you have a basketball goal on the edge of the pool. You have a little basketball, and it's basketball with football attached, 
with uh, some rugby kind of attached and some MMA kind of attached to it as well. In other words, there is no such thing as a foul. And this is an all-out war in the water to see who can score more than the others. Now, I divided the teams. And I thought I divided the teams so that my team would win. I like to win. My team lost two games in a row. The reason why is one of our pastors is, is, is an Angus bull. I mean, he's, he's just, he's a Viking. I mean, he's just, he's just, he is one mean dude to try to deal with in a swimming pool with a ball in his hands. He has pastored at Mineral Wells and he's now the campus pastor at High Ridge uh, Graham. God bless you, Pastor Dan. He was an immovable, unstoppable force. He dominated the game. The one who was supposed to be guarding him and stopping him shall remain nameless as well. Longview, Texas. <laughs> and we got destroyed, but we had a blast. But it wasn't all fun and games. We sought the Lord. I think it's important to do both. We sought the Lord. We had some great worship times. Pastor Jeremy went and, and took us into the presence of the Lord. We had some great worship times. We prayed for each other. We laid hands on each other. We called out for more. We gave words to each other. We listened to God together. We, we had themes develop. We had devotions. Different ones gave devotions throughout the time we were away. Themes develop. Waves of revival. Renewal. An increase of hope. Themes develop like, like strengthened marriages and families and communities. Spirit led, spirit-filled increase. Hungry hearts being satisfied. Spiritual passion for God's presence being stirred up. The Lord spoke to us and gave us a new theme. And it came out of Hebrews chapter six. And I want you to now watch the screens. We have a video to introduce it. See, there's an energy in water. Waves pounding back and forth sweeping everything in its path. Can you see it? Hear the power in sound. Every frequency a sonic explosion of force in pursuit of the hearing ear. Can you hear it? Feel the rumble of an earthquake. The earth rattling through tectonic plates beneath our feet. Can you feel it? All this elemental resonance from the beginning of time, alpha to omega, the same power that walked on water, turned water into wine, cast out demons, rose from the dead. The same power in Jesus Christ, our forerunner, is on the move today. Can you see it? Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Awake, O oh sleeper. Arise, O oh faithless. Take heart, you hopeless. A wave is here. An anthem is roaring. The earth is shaking. Let us be anchored in hope in Jesus Christ, firm and secure. He's on the move. Didn't our creative team do an awesome job with that? That's just phenomenal, the, the creativity and the anointing that our creative team has. Just such a phenomenal job. So our theme for 2022 is da -da -da -da, anchored in hope. Can y'all see that? There, I just, I'm flexing. The theme is anchored in hope, and it's gonna be an awesome year. An awesome year. Somebody say amen that you believe it's gonna be an awesome year. So I wanna ask you some questions as we get into the text. It's Hebrews chapter six. Are you anchored? Are you anchored? Everybody is, but are you anchored to the Lord? Here's another question. What are you tethered to? Now we're gonna be talking about being anchored, but really we're talking about that part of the anchor that most of the time is ignored, the tether. What are you connected to? Who are you connected to and why? So all year long, this is gonna be an underlying theme and I believe it's gonna help you grow spiritually and I believe it's gonna be awesome. So go to Hebrews chapter six and let's take a look at this. Hebrews chapter six, verse 19. We have this as a sure and steadfast, somebody say that next word, anchor of the soul, a, say that next word, hope, anchored in hope. So what does that mean? Well, 
The word soul is the, is the Greek word suke, which means your mind, will, and emotion. So every time you see the word soul in the Bible, it's talking about really your personality, the real you. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. And so the question is, is where are your mind, will, and emotions anchored? What are they connected to? In other words, where do your thoughts come from? Past hurts? Crazy things being spoken in our world today? Or do they come from the Lord? Where do your decisions come from? Do your decisions come from the way everybody else makes decisions? Do they come from the way you were taught to make decisions in frustration, sometimes in anger? Or are your decisions dictated to you by the Lord? Where are your emotional responses anchored? What, what are you connected to when you have a response? Is it to your own personal selfishness? Is it to your own frustration? Then I'm telling you, you're not anchored in the right place. You're not tethered to the right thing. It should be in the Lord. An anchor is something that holds something else in place. In other words, you need to be held in place by the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs that the name of the Lord is like a strong tower where the righteous, everybody who's righteous, wave your hand, everybody knows Christ, where the righteous can go and be safe. You need to be anchored and connected to the Lord. There are two parts to the anchor. I wanna help you to understand this because it's very important. Without either one, you don't have an anchor. You don't have the proper perspective. First of all is, is the, the tether, the rope, the cable, the chain. It's what makes the connection. So where are you connected? What are you connected to? It's very important that you understand that you are connected to something. The question is, is what is it? Hobbies? Video game playing? Sports? Sports team? Kids activities? Hobbies, what, what, what is it? What are, you, what are you connected to? What do you think about the most? Wherever you're connected is, is what will dictate the pace of your spiritual life. It will tell you where you're going and how things are gonna be. And then the heavy part of the anchor, usually cast iron or, or rock or cement, big, and then what comes off the sides of the anchor called the flutes. When the heavy thing is dropped and it hits the bottom, it grabs hold and holds on so that whatever's going on at the surface, that which is underneath can hold it steady. And quite often, that's all that we think about when we think about an anchor. But we need to think about both parts. And we're gonna teach you this year how to understand and live with both parts being strong. In other words, who or where is your strong place? Wherever the flutes are connected to and what they're grabbing hold of is your strong place. Quite often for us, it's other people. But really, as good and as blessed as they are, they can't measure up to the Lord. Quite often for us, it's, it's an activity. But really, as good as that activity might be, even serving the Lord, even a ministry that you've developed or that you're involved in, still pales in comparisons, comparisons com, uh, that word, with being connected to God, anchored to the Lord. So we wanna help you this year. We wanna teach you the importance of being anchored. To anchor speaks of being set, steady, and secure. To anchor means that you're connected to something more stable than yourself. Yes, the picture that always comes up is a boat being anchored in rough waters, able to endure the storm. That's right, and that's what we want for you this year. But there's also another picture of being anchored or being tethered. And the water gives us another, where, where, where a surfer is sitting on smooth water, tethered to a surfboard. In other words, anchored and connected to that surfboard, such that when the wind blows and the wave comes, speaking of the Holy Spirit, I believe, when, when that happens in your life, then you're anchored and you're connected and you can get up and ride the waves of blessing that God's gonna bring to your life this year. Both are very important. Locked and loaded through hard times, but ready to sail, ready to take off, ready to be tethered to something that can help you ride with God into blessings and into abundance. So what are we to be anchored to? The answer is pretty clear. In 2022, let's be anchored to hope. That's what Hebrews 6.19 says. To be anchored to hope. What is hope? Somebody ask me. What is hope? Hope is, you wanna write this down. You might wanna post this. This is, I think, the most important thing in the teaching today. All campuses, here we go. Hope is 
the confident expectation of what God has promised. When you're hoping in something, you're confident that what God has promised you is gonna come to pass. That's what hope is. Faith is confidence in the goodness of God over everything and in everything. Hope is confident and anticipating the fulfillment of a promise God has given you. Hope is awesome. Hope is one of the big three. I think the least taught about of the big three. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says this, now faith, hope, and love abide. And that word abide means remain forever. In other words, faith, hope, and love have always been, are right now, and will always be. They abide forever, but quite often, we're taught about, we have understanding of faith, we're taught about, we have understanding of love, but what about hope? What about hope? It's a theme that we as the pastors, we believe God wants to, to lock us into and stir us up into in 2022, because it will tie in with knowing God, finding freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. It's just gonna be an awesome year and I'm glad you're here for it. Hope is forward focused. Without hope, we would have a very dull spiritual life. Hope is one of the big three, as I just said. See, when you're anchored to God, you'll have hope. When you're anchored to God, you have hope. Hope is dynamic, it's not stagnant. Many people think hope sits still because of the picture of an anchor holding a boat still. No, hope is dynamic. Hope is a spiritual truth. And, and the life in the spirit is never stagnant. It's never dull, it's never dead. It's always, God is always on the move and always working in some way. The question is, is are you in on it? Hope anticipates a blessed future, not an empty now. Hope speaks of being ready to go with God, not disappointed that what you thought should have already happened hasn't happened yet. So let's dig into the passage. I want you to see what's coming up over the next four weeks, what we're gonna teach you, because it's, it's awesome, and I think it'll really strengthen your life. I wanna encourage you to bring your friends and your family, everybody that you know, everybody that you don't know, everybody that you like, everybody that you dislike. Bring them all to church. <laughs> Hebrews 6, 13, the full passage. So I believe is being taught uh, having a master's degree in theology, I believe we need to get the big picture and not just always just narrow in on, now I do both. I receive words from the Lord and it's a phrase, sometimes just one word, but I also believe that when we teach, we should teach the whole thought that the Holy Spirit had when he spoke it to whoever wrote it down. In this case, it's Peter, okay? Everybody understand that? Nod your heads. Okay, good, here we go, Hebrews 6, 13. For when God made a promise, everybody say promise. When God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself. Here's the first thing. You can be anchored in God's promises. You can be anchored in God's promises. We're gonna teach you about promises because you need to understand them so that you can anchor into them and hold on to them. My lovely bride, who's, who's battling sickness today, watch it online, love you baby, get well, uh, is posting promises. Do you know how many promises there are in the Bible? Anybody know? 365. Think about that for a second. What do you think the connection is? Ding, 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 ding. How many days in the year? One promise in the Bible for every day of your year. Now, I don't know if she's gonna post one every day this year, but she's been posting them. If you're not, if you're not connected to Dawn online, you need to do it. She's got awesome stuff that she puts on on Facebook and Instagram. Anyway. Uh, Promises are something we can hope in. Amen? Amen, somebody? Promises are something we can hope in. Let's go on, verse 14. Notice it's the same sentence. Saying, surely I will bless you and multiply you. I'm in favor of that this year, are you? Increase. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. Here's the second truth we want you to see, and we'll teach about it these next four weeks. You can be anchored in patience. Patience. Heard one guy say, don't pray for patience because God's gonna give it to you anyway. I heard one guy pray and say, Lord, I don't need more opportunities to be patient. Those aren't working so far. I just need you to help me be patient. So God's gonna help us understand the importance of holding on in patience to the promises he's given us. Let's go down to verse 17. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise, that's us, the unchangeable character of his purpose. He guaranteed it with an oath. This year you can be anchored in God's purpose for your life. 
Talked about it a second ago, but I just want everyone to know this. Everyone look at me. Those of you watching, watching on the screen, God has a purpose for your life. Your life doesn't have to be empty. You, you don't need to live waking up in the morning going, good Lord, it's morning. You can wake up every morning, and when you have purpose in your life, you can wake up and say, good morning, Lord. What are we gonna do today? God has purpose for your life. He wants you to live in a place of blessing. He wants you to be aware of his nearness in your life, and he wants you to know how good it is for you to have his nearness in your life. He wants you to live with purpose. He wants your life to have meaning. He doesn't want you to just walk and go through the motions. And I pray that you'll understand it more this year than ever before. Understand what it's like to live a meaningful, purpose-filled, God-blessed, God-ordained life. It's an awesome way to live. You can be anchored in God's purpose for your life. Here we go, verse 19. Here's the fourth one. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope, look at this, that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. You can be anchored in God's presence. You can be anchored in God's presence. You can be so anchored and so familiar with God's presence that you don't have to wait for a worship service to be able to touch the presence of God. You can be so anchored and so connected and in the place where God is. Yes, yes, I know what you're saying. He does dwell within us. Our bodies are his temple. But there's also a concept where we need his presence to manifest, where we need the Holy Spirit to come on us. Yes, we, we're filled with the Spirit, but we're also to continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what you can have an awareness of is that his presence is near, but you can also have an understanding that you can stay in the place where he is. You can hear him pray for you. You can worship with the heavenly hosts that are worshiping with him. Tonight we will start that together during during our four nights of, of praying and praising and fasting and worshiping God together. Help you to understand what God's presence is like. It's gonna be awesome, all campuses. I wanna encourage you to be a part. Times of refreshing in God's presence. Spiritual breakthroughs in God's presence. Hearing God's voice. Understanding where he is and how he's moving. That's what I hope for you. That's what I believe for you. 2022 is gonna help you to get anchored. It's gonna help you to connect, gonna help you to be strong and set, anchored in God, anchored in church life. What's that mean? Anchored in what's happening, participating, even financially, where you're connected, where this is your spiritual family and you give your tithe into this storehouse, into this place making a difference. You just saw the video a moment ago. That's happening because of those who are faithful to give their tithes. What's your tithe? It's the first 10% of what you receive in your income. It's not yours, it's God's. And you're best off when you just go ahead right off the top and give it to him. Why? Because 20% because 20 of the people don't need to be getting all the blessings, 100% of the people need to be in on the blessings. And stats show that about 20% of the people in churches like ours are the ones who are tithing. Think about what could happen in your life if you would enter into God's blessings and stop staying on the outside. The Bible says that when you start tithing, God can then bless you. When you're not, then you're on your own. And I don't know about you, but I wanna be all out on God. I don't wanna try to make it happen on my own. 90% with God's blessing always does better than 100% without it, always. You can be anchored in church life. You can be anchored in serving, serving how you ask, serving when the family gathers, serving in the house, serving in small groups. I just wanna encourage many of you to, to step up and serve. It's necessary, and then you have the blessing. Every time someone meets Jesus and you are serving, you have the blessing, I believe, your name's connected to theirs in heaven. And someday, when, when the roll is called and when the connections are made, you're gonna be rejoicing because of the number of people that are gonna say, thank you for giving to the Lord. Thank you for serving the Lord. I'm a life that was changed. Anchored in relationships in the right way. The two biggest things that, that you all have responded to us and that Christians in general respond to that you wanna be taught about are relationships, how to have a good marriage, how to have blessings with your kids, with your parents, and the second is regarding end times. What's gonna happen? 
Are we gonna be here when it happens? Is there gonna be anything scary come along? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna help you be anchored in relationships because we're gonna have a series teaching you all about marriage, family, dating, etc. It's gonna be phenomenal. Somebody say amen. You might be an old pro. We're just gonna, if you're an old pro and all relationships in your life are good, we're just gonna give you some stuff that you can put into the hopper to help other people with. And then we're gonna teach you and help you to be anchored in wisdom. Anchored in wisdom. Because that's what we need in the, in the last days. Listen, there are enough talking heads in this world, talking stuff that is not blessed by God, talking and it's coming from the Antichrist spirit, it's just bringing death and discouragement to people. I wanna encourage you to understand the importance of being anchored in wisdom, in knowing the word of God, in knowing what the Bible says is gonna happen in the last days, so that you won't be tossed around and made fearful every time some new thing comes along like a pandemic. I'm gonna teach you how to be anchored in wisdom. The series will be about the end times. I'm gonna teach you about being anchored in the Holy Spirit. How important, how awesome to be anchored in the Holy Spirit. If you don't know it yet, he is God and he is good. He's not the bronze medalist of the Trinity. He's God, he's good, and you don't need to be afraid of him. I love it that Kathy Lee Gifford, one of the most popular uh, talk show hosts ever in the history of, of television, who herself is a Christ follower, said this week, quote, I don't understand why so many Christians in America are afraid of spiritual gifts. It's like, I don't either. Holy Spirit's no one to be afraid of. He's God and he's good. And it just blessed me that she came out and shared that. So we're gonna help you in that even more this year. Might be a book coming this year. Called Life in the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all, if that book does come about, might buy it? Can, can a few hands go up to encourage your brother? Yeah, okay. Man, 30 of you are blessed today. You're just, you got anointing and all kinds of good things coming to your life. And then we want you to be anchored in prayer and fasting, anchored in the presence of the Lord. Starting tonight, 6.30, all campuses, it is gonna be awesome. We're gonna worship, we're gonna call out to God, we're gonna hear God, we're gonna pray. There's gonna be an insight given every night this week. Next, uh, ne tomorrow night in Fort Worth, it's gonna have a prophetic emphasis. We want you to hear God speak through two men that I've invited in that have the gift of prophecy. It's gonna be awesome. That will also happen at the other campuses as well. It's gonna be awesome. Are you anchored in hope? Are you anchored in hope? If not, this year's your year. If you are, this year's the year for increase. This year's the year for increase for more. Amen, everybody? It's gonna be a blessing, and I'm glad you're here for the ride. Bring your friends, bring your family, we do our best to help them meet Jesus and we'll do our best to help and encourage them. We don't ever wanna embarrass anybody, so thank you for your faithfulness. Let's pray. All campuses, would you close your eyes and bow your heads? Campus pastors, go ahead and, and go up at the campuses right now if you would. I'm just curious to know how many, by lifting your hand, would say, Pastor Jeff, I'd like an increase in hope. Just lift your hand. There were hundreds in the first service, just, just as I thought. Campuses, go ahead. Campus pastor is watching and he's gonna pray for you as you lift your hand. I wanna have an increase of hope. Anybody else, just slip your hand up. Lord, I pray for my friends and I wanna thank you for the, the honesty that they have right now. I wanna thank you for the love that they have for you. I wanna thank you, Lord God, for the blessing that they are in your family and your army. And Lord, I pray right now for increase to be theirs. Lord, right now they're, they're reaching out, they're reaching up. And Lord, I pray that there would be an awareness that your nearness is their good, an awareness that you love them, an awareness of blessing. So I wanna thank you, Lord, that hope is coming, that it's being released even right now, and I wanna thank you that it's gonna be a good year full of hope. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, you can put your hands down. If everyone keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed, this campus and all campuses, I wanna help those of you that would say, you know, Jeff, in all honesty, I don't have this God thing figured out yet. I'm not positive at the end of my life, whenever that might be, that I'm gonna be with God in his heaven forever. I'm just not positive, I'm not sure. And by the way I've been living, I'm pretty sure that, that I don't know him and that I'm not gonna be with him in heaven. Well, friend, I wanna encourage you to recognize something. You're here right now in this service you're here because God loves you and has a plan for your life. 
and he wants to do something for you right now that you can't do for yourself. This is good news, my friend. He wants to forgive your sins, all of them, past, present, and future. The problem is that you've gotta ask him to do it. And deep down inside, you know that your best efforts to be good aren't cutting it. And so I just wanna give you an opportunity. You haven't taken advantage of this yet. I wanna encourage you to take advantage of it right now. I needed help one time and someone helped me to connect with the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And I would love to do that with you. So I'm gonna pray a simple prayer. I'll pause after each phrase and I invite you to pray this prayer with me. And God promises to answer this prayer immediately. All right, here we go. You pray with me, friend. Lord Jesus, I'm choosing to put my trust in you right now. I'm choosing right now to believe that you're God's son and that when you conquered sin and death, came out of the grave victorious, I'm choosing to believe that you did that for me. And I'm asking you right now, Lord, to come into my life to take over my life and to forgive me of all of my sins, past, present, and future. And Lord, I want you to know, pray this friend, this is very, very important. I want you to know that starting right now, I'm not gonna live my life my way any longer. Starting right now, I'm gonna live the rest of my life with you. And here's the last part of the prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for just now hearing my prayer. And it's in your name that I've prayed. Amen. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. If you just prayed with me in Fort Worth and the other campuses, would you look up right now and would you give a wave? Would you just look up and give a wave and say, that's me, I just prayed with you. I just prayed with you. I just asked Jesus to forgive my sins. Good. Campus pastors are watching right now. They're watching because they want to encourage you. Good. God bless you. Would everyone look this way? Friends, can we celebrate those who took a step toward God just now? Can we celebrate? Come on, all campuses, let's celebrate our friends taking a step toward God. Everybody look at me and those that just prayed with me and trusted Christ. Your next step is to be baptized in water like Jesus was. And that's coming up in a few weeks. I wanna encourage you right now to sign up and register. You'll be glad that you obeyed what Jesus told you to do. The first thing after you ask for forgiveness is to be baptized. You'll be so glad that you did it. God bless you all. Everybody, God bless you. P campus pastors, you've got it. That's it. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Pastor Jeff. As our serving team makes their way to their stations, for the rest of you, I'd love for you to turn your attention to the seat pocket in front of you. There's this green card there. If this is your first time you're looking to get connected or you just prayed with Pastor Jeff, I would love for you to take that card and fill it out and you can drop it in the wooden box when you leave here in just a moment. Now, like you, I'm excited about our theme for 2022 and I'd be willing to bet that a lot of you are thinking, you know what, when it comes to being anchored, I wanna be more anchored in my relationship with Jesus, but you know what? I'm not sure what step to take. Here's what I I would love for you to do. On that connect card, you have one side where you put your information, but then on the other side, we have a set of steps that you can take. These are biblical steps that you're to take in your relationship with Jesus. I would love for you to look at that card and ask yourself the question, man, is there any step on that card that I have yet to take in my relationship with Jesus? And if you'll just check that box and drop it in the wooden box when you leave here in just a moment, one of our team members will get in contact with you and we will try to help you take that step in your relationship with Jesus as you go into this year trying to be more anchored in your relationship with him. So again, if you fill that out, you can drop it in the wooden box when you leave here in just a moment. Well, as you saw in the recap video, man, our vision is alive and well at High Ridge Church. God has done incredible things last year, and he's going to continue to do great things through our church. So I just want to say thank you to every single one of you that are trusting God with your finances. And if that's a step that you haven't taken yet in your relationship with the Lord, I would encourage you to do that today. There are several ways you can give at High Ridge. You can give online through the app or through the envelope that's in the seat pocket in front of you. And if you give through the envelope, you can drop that in the wooden box when you leave here in just a moment. Again, thank you so much for trusting God with your finances because man, God's got big things for us in 2022. Amen. 
Well, go ahead and stand to your feet. And as you stand, I want to invite our prayer team to the front. We never want you to come to High Ridge Church on a weekend with a burden and to leave with that burden. So if you have any prayer requests and you just want to join in faith with our awesome team, they would love to do that for you. And for the rest of you, don't forget tonight. I want to say tonight, 6.30 in this room is going down. We will have kids ministry for zero to five-year-olds. So make sure you come and participate and be a part of that. And don't forget, you can check out our merch in the lobby as you leave here in just a moment. We love you guys so much. We hope you have a blessed week.